Today I'm going to update you about my stock account. Today my stock account has made a loss of 309 US dollars. US stocks close mix of Nvidia earnings and the debt selling talks. Wall Street turns around from bearish US stocks to worrying about missing a rally. So first let's take a look at my account. Today my account has Today, my account has decreased for 4.25% due to United Natural Gas decreasing its price uh, to 6.76 US dollars. Today, the net asset of my account is $74,434.04. Today, market generally closed lower. Uh, with the tech industries dragging up the market, Dow Jones Industrial Average closed down 0.11%, Nasdaq Composite closed up 1.71%, and S&P 500 closed up 0.88%. Today, the energy resources and uh, and the telecom services closed down by more than 2%, while the semiconductors industry due to Nvidia's earnings closed up 11.19%. And the software infrastructure and the semiconductor uh, equipment and materials also closed up more than 3%. The US stocks closed mixed on Thursday with the Dow down for a fifth straight session. Nvidia's strong results helped drive tech stocks higher. Fitch placed the US AAA rating on its negative rating watch list. M Democrats say. Rep Progress in the selling talks. Republicans are willing to background on defense spending. Nvidia shares closes 24.4% higher. The AI beneficiaries' revenue surged in line with earnings and issued stronger than expected second quarter revenue guidance. Several brokerages operated, upgraded their ratings on the stock after Nvidia's earnings report. White Bush upgraded it to outperform with a 490 price target. HSBC raised its price target from $600 to $600 from $355 US dollars. Needham raised its price target from to $460 from $300. Other semiconductors, semiconductor sectors, including AMD and uh, TSMC, were boosted by Nvidia's results. Vagnik Semiconductor ETF rose 8.6%. Debt selling talks are closely watched. The U.S. debt selling talks remain the focus of the market. Investors worry that not raising the debt selling would could lead to serious economic damage, making it harder to hold on to risky assets. Republican debt selling negotiators on Thursday shelved a big increase in defense spending in favor of a small increase in Biden's budget proposal, according to people familiar with the matter. The consensus on defense spending marks a major victory of Democrats, who have been trying to beat back a Republicans' effort to increase Biden's $886.3 billion national security budget for the next year, which is actually up 3.3% from current levels. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy acknowledged Thursday that Republicans' hope for defense would have to be cut, but he gave no details of what were being considered. Republicans also demanded big cuts in demo the domestic spending in exchange for them agreeing to raise the debt ceiling by June 1st. The, ceiling, the level of funding for non-defense spending is understood to be still under negotiation. After Wednesday's debt, debt ceiling talks, McCarthy said the Repub representatives of the talks remain divided over the spending ceiling and accused Democrats of coming to the table so late in the progress. Process as the debt selling talks did stalled. Fitch rating and the DPRS Morgan Star put the US AAA non term foreign exchange issue or default rating IDR on a negative watch list. The next step will be a downgrade. Fitch added that the, ch the chances of the US not paying its debt on time are very low. Non forecasting government spending to exceed revenue and a deficit of 6.5% of the US economy. In, two, in 2023 and 6.9% by 2024. Moody's expects lawmakers to finally reach an agreement to raise the borrowing ceiling, but Moody's senior vice president John Foster said the company is preparing 
for non for negotiations and a potential interim solution. If lawmakers say they expect a default, Moody's can act ahead of it to change its outlook for the U.S. government from stable to negative. The changing outlook would reflect a substantial increase in the likelihood of a downgrade. In a polarizing political environment, the outlook reflected in the debt ceiling standoff suggests that the U.S. credit rating is no longer at its AAA levels. Next Monday is Memorial Day. As Congress is to into recess, and the debt ceiling talks are cut again, U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen has again warned that Treasury measures almost certainly cannot survive in early June. M McCarthy came out to reassure investors, promising that Republicans would not panic market in any way. At last, Merchant Capital CEO Bob Diamond said, the political game we play is at its limit. I think there is no doubt that letting the federal government default will be a very, very scary decision for the dollar. Treasury bonds are brand and our reputation, but I think the chances of that happening are very small. Wall Street turns around. From bearish U.S. stocks to worrying about missing a rally. Wall Street strategists and portfolio managers have drifted from pessimism about 2023 to fear of missing out on a potential rally. Morgan Stanley Investment Manage Management Senior Portfolio Manager Andrew Sloman said in a telephone interview, he recently thinks the S&P 500 index in, re in December will top 4,200 view is too low now. As the market expectations of 2024 earnings recovery and investors' fear of missed opportunities mentality began to appear, and the U.S. benchmark stock index may rebound to 4,600 4, points at the end of this year. Suleiman said, If I were a financial advisor, by October and November, I hadn't made money for clients because I would have a lot of cash. I would start to be nervous. My guess is that later this year, money will start returning to the market. In addition to some very stubborn bears, more and more people will reluctantly increase their forecasts. However, just two days after Suleiman's hike, Bank of America equity strategist Savita Sobranian also raised its year-end price target for the S&P 500 from to 4,300 from 4,000. In range of 4,900 to 4,600. Despite the volatility in May, U.S. stocks have withstood a number of headwinds this year, from interest rate hikes to banking turmoil to the coming recession. Still, the S&P 500 is up more than 3%. More than 7% in 2023, while the tech heavy Nasdaq 100 is up 24%. Meanwhile, investors added $21 billion in long positions in the SP 500 last week, the largest ever rise tracked in recent years, according to Citigroup. Meanwhile, Goldman's bulk brokerage division hedge funds that are both long and short bought U.S. stocks for two straight weeks, at their highest pace since October after a sustained sell off. Overall, the time seems ripe for a bullish market in the second half of the year. Finally, Sloman said, if you review our history like last year, behavior factors is consistent. After a sharp fall, people began to bearish, but when the market began to rise, now we have two consecutive quarters of positive returns from behavior. It is. It begins to attract investors. You begin to see fear from the development of FOMO. That's all I have for today. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to subscribe and like. See you next episode.